What's up guys and welcome back to another G35 video. In today's video we're going to be installing some tie rod spacers. Now these tie rod spacers will help you get 8 to 10 degrees more angle on your steering rack. That's really cool because if you're trying to drift your car you get 8 to 10 degrees and more angle for like 10 bucks which is an amazing deal. And if you have a G35 that's your daily driver 8 to 10 degrees and more angle is actually going to help you out in tight parking lots, uh, parallel parking and so on and so forth. Just because I feel like these G35s and 350Zs really don't have that much angle to play with. Doing this install is going to help out get more angle and it's honestly really cheap to do so why not do it. So here are the tie rod spacers. These are little spacers that are going to help out and get you more angle. It's like 10 bucks with shipping I believe. Amazing bang per buck for the angle you're getting. And along with the spacers I'm also going to be installing some outer tie rods and inner tie rods to go with it. You obviously don't have to do this. You can just install the spacer but I just want to do some maintenance and get these replaced. So the cool thing about these outer tie rods is they do have a grease fitting so that's going to be useful to put some new grease every time you do an oil change so you have fresh grease in there and they'll last a lot longer than your OEM ones. So that's what I'm going to be installing today so let's go ahead and start the install. So in last week's video I asked you guys if you wanted the Matt Hill where he does the Ed impersonation. You guys said you wanted it in the outro so from now on every outro is going to have the Ed and Eddie. I don't know where I'll put it exactly. That's going to be something in the video that you guys wanted so it's going to be in there. So we have to remove the cotter pin first then we have to remove the bolt and then we can go ahead and remove the tie rod and then we'll be able to take everything off. Hey. Here we go. This is how you remove a tie rod so you can keep your alignment as best as possible. You're going to count how many times this spins and however many times it spins when you put back on the new one you'll be able to do the same amount of spins and that's as close as you can get to the alignment. Obviously you would still want to get an alignment afterwards but you're going to count the spins. This would be one spin and then you'd go ahead and count till it comes off so two. 3, 16. So 16 times you would have to spin it when you put it back on and then you just lock it up and then that's how you get your alignment as close as possible. So that way you can go ahead and drive to the alignment shop and get your car aligned. So I removed the inner tie rod now and all we have to do now is put the spacer on a new inner tie rod and then we can bolt everything back on. The inner tie rod already has thread locker but since we're putting on the spacer it actually is going to lose a bit of threads so what I'm going to do is put even more thread locker just to make sure it doesn't back out. We should be good to go so you're going to put the spacer right here on the inner tie rod and then you can go ahead and bolt it back on. So you can use a crescent wrench and just take off the inner tie rod and then you can go ahead and put it back on once you put the spacer on. I'm gonna go ahead and put more thread locker, put it back on, and then we'll be able to install the outer tie rod and we should be good to go. So I'm gonna show you guys the difference between the new... <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys the difference between the old inner tie rod and then the new one. So as you can see, the inner tie rod is just not supposed to be moving that easily. There should be some resistance. There is no resistance on this. Like it just moves around, just flops around. So the new one, is actually so hard I can't even move it by hand that's a big difference that you're gonna notice just in the tie rods so if your tie rod moves really easily you should probably replace it it's probably time now it's the same thing with the outer tie rods the outer tie rods this one moves rather easily I mean it's still good but I mean rather just replace everything while I'm at it and this one it doesn't move it oh, barely moves um, and I still need to grease this and it has the grease fitting so that's the difference so if you notice that your inner tie rod and your outer tie rod are moving really really easily you should probably replace it if the boots are torn on the outer tie rod probably replace it as well since you're taking everything apart might as well replace some so we ended up finishing both sides on the car now and we're gonna go ahead and put the wheels back on pretty simple install when it comes to the spacer if you wanted to do just the spacer I recommend if you already need the inner and outer just go ahead and pick those up they're not too expensive I I picked them up from rockauto.com and it was like 20 bucks for each of the inner tie rods and the outer tie rods were like 24 I believe. So I definitely recommend getting them from Rock Auto instead of like Concept Z or Z1. What's up guys, Master Tech Mike here and I'm here to show you how to jack off your own G35. <laughs> I mean, jack off, excuse me. Anyway, if you come on down here, you'll see. We have some nice pinch wheels along here. A couple of them are bent, but that's all right. We don't need to worry about that. So, I'm just gonna go ahead, slide a little jack on in here a couple pumps. It's time to pump it up. Make sure it's nice and lined up in there. Yep, there you go. And then you're gonna really pump it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> See that? That's master pumping right there. You slide the jacks in under there. It was already under there before, but you know. Slide that under there. Make sure it's nice and lined up. How's that looking, Joe? Yeah, it's looking mighty fine. Looking mighty fine? Cool. And then you just set her on down. Make sure it's nice and safe. 
And there you go. That's how you jack up. I mean, jack up your car. <laughs> Master Jack approved. Definitely, you can see a big difference right here. You usually don't see a gap. You can see a gap right here. So it's a pretty significant difference. I mean, this should help a good amount. Obviously, I'm gonna have a review for you guys on these spacers themselves, so that way you guys can know if it's worth it or not. Honestly, for 10 bucks, not a bad way to get more angle. I don't think there's any other cheaper way you can get the same amount of angle for the price. So again, for daily driving, this is gonna help, you know, parallel park a little bit easier, navigate parking lots a little bit easier. And then for drifting, if anybody's interested in that, you know, you obviously get almost 10 degrees, eight to 10 degrees, and that can help you out, you know, with, with more steering angles, so that way you can hold drifts a little bit better. So really inexpensive mod, and it does help you out with drifting or just day-to-day -day driving. So that was Master Tech Mike showing you guys where to jack up your G3. The last video I got comments saying if I can show you guys where the jacking points are on the G35s I decided to get Mike to help out with that So if you guys like that little segment, I can tell Mike to do other ones So since Mike is a master tech who else better than to show you guys so hope you guys enjoyed that But with that being said guys, I hope you did enjoy this video I hope you found it useful So again 10 bucks for 8 to 10 degrees of extra angle on your steering So if you guys did enjoy this video, give it a like subscribe if you're new around here Plenty of G35 content on the channel already, so go ahead and check it out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, hi there. Uh, my name is Matt Hill, and I am the voice of Ed, um, and I just wanted you um, to subscribe uh, to uh, Joe Vaquez before the cankers take my buttered toast. <laughs> okay, have a great day.